the left refuses to scale back their divisive, false and violent rhetoric. I don't understand why it's so difficult for the press to have a consistent narrative about how dangerous uh, Trump is, his uh, danger to our country and the world. If Donald Trump wants people, wants Kamala Harris and others to say, to stop saying that he is a threat to democracy, then he should stop threatening democracy. Perhaps he shouldn't be overturning trying to overturn elections, overthrow the government. Today's apparent assassination attempt comes amid increasingly fierce rhetoric on the campaign trail itself. Mr. Trump, his running mate J.D. Vance, continue to make baseless claims about Haitian immigrants in Ohio. They went as far to blame Trump for the multiple assassination attempts against him. Team Trump has the receipts. They dropped a long list of Democrat rhetoric that has undoubtedly led to America's decline into third world political violence. Joining me now to discuss is President of Judicial Watch, Tom Fenton. It's always good to see you, sir. So Hillary Clinton okay. couldn't even wait, what, 48 hours to call Trump a danger to the existence of our country, continuing the rhetoric that led to Steve Scalise nearly being killed, to BLM and Antifa riots against our people, and two Trump assassination attempts. Why do you think the Democrats are so emboldened to go down this road? Uh, the conclusion one can draw is they want to see him killed. Uh, there's no more excuse. Uh, this isn't prior to the assassination where you're kind of engaged in heated rhetoric. And uh, this is after two assassination attempts and she goes out and says that she's a, he's a danger to the country. Well, we know how to deal with dangers, right? You kill them, you end them. She knows exactly what she's saying. The left knows exactly what it's doing. It's inciting violence against President Trump. The same gang that wants to put him in jail on a pretext, deprive him of his freedom, despite knowing he did nothing wrong, specifically her, is it a stretch to think they want something worse to happen to him? Of course not. And there's no doubt, and you can well, see that in after he was nearly killed two days ago, the reaction of the left is to blame him for their supporter nearly killing him. Yeah, that, that they're, they're, they sit there and they say that he's the threat to democracy while their left-wingers are shooting at President Trump. Yesterday, the Secret Service acting director warning of what he called a looming crisis, watch. There could be another geopolitical event that could put the United States into a kinetic conflict or some other, uh, some other issue that may result in additional responsibilities and protectees of the United States Secret Service. Okay, that, that sounds like he's, he's prepping us for something. What, what does that sound like to you, Tom? Well, uh, you know, I, I don't know what he's talking about. I, I mean, let's be clear. I don't think the current leadership of the Secret Service is performing what the taxpayers and voters want them uh, to perform as, uh, which are competent, apolitical uh, uh, individuals who will deploy assets and protections for President Trump without political interference. And so him talking about uh, other conflicts that increase risk profiles for President Trump or others is irrelevant now and a distraction from the fact that this agency run by Biden administration appointees, Biden-Harris appointees, is has uh, made a series of willfully negligent acts that have led nearly to President Trump being killed, an innocent American being killed, two other Americans being killed, and the country being traumatized. And he's up there, you know, <laughs> performing for who, I don't know. They have $3 billion, practically speaking, now they have infinite resources to protect Trump. It's not just the Secret Service, other agencies can be brought in on an emergency basis. They know what to do. They haven't done it, and at this point, there's no excuse, which again, raises the likelihood that it's purposeful. And we have a re demonstrated record of this administration making protection decisions based on politics. Robert Kennedy, Joe Biden's own yes. granddaughter. Yes, yes, yes. Well, Tom, I've only got about a minute left, and I gotta get this last question in. Uh, the Democrats always claim that their restrictions, regulations, and, and abridgments of our rights are put in place to keep us safe. They always say it's, you know, to keep us safe or it's for the kids. They passed a law saying felons can't own firearms. Yet, 
The second Trump assassin shows up with an illegal rifle. So much for the Democrats' vaunted laws, right? I've said the next time government fails because it always fails, Americans have better be ready to, to defend themselves and their families. Where am I going wrong? Yeah, I mean, that raises the question, Chris. It, it, can the president, President Trump, rely on the Secret Service to protect him? Or does he have to bring in additional private security? I'd recommend that he do that. The government isn't going to do it, either through incompetence or for political reasons. I'm afraid he's going to get killed. Uh, you know, and, and, and the Keystone cop approach, which is a charitable interpretation, that the Secret Service has proven itself to be an, uh, another failure, invites additional attacks because people see that they can get through the perimeter, that there is no perimeter. Inexcusable. And in the meantime, of course, they're covering everything up. Not one document has been released to Judicial Watch under FOIA. We're in federal court. Secrecy and corruption is going to get Trump killed. Well, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Thank God for Judicial Watch. Tom Fitton, always appreciate the visit, sir. Come back soon.